Britain's oldest road, also known as the Ridgeway. For at least 5,000 years, travellers, herdsmen and soldiers have used the same route, and it's still in use today. I was hoping to follow in their footsteps, but I'd be using slightly more modern gear than them. I'd be carrying enough food, 2 litres of water and some camping gear. This way I was pretty self-reliant. All I had to worry about was the 87 miles that lay ahead. The Ridgeway passes through a surprisingly remote part of central southern England. From its start in the World Heritage Site of Avebury, it follows a ridge of chalk hills in a northeasterly direction for 87 miles. It finally reaches Ivinco Beacon, lying to the northwest of London. Summer was in full swing, and I got some amazing weather for this one. 90 miles west of London and 20 miles north of Stonehenge stands Avebury. Roughly 4,000 years old and the largest known stone circle in Europe. You may ask, what's significant about this place? Well, it was the last stop on the bus, that's all. I jump off here before making my way to the beginning of the Ridgeway at Overton Hill. The south of England was experiencing a drought, making fields and pathways very dry. It was ideal for walking, no wet shoes for me hopefully. Being the peak of summer and with all the sun, there was an abundance of wild fruit. Whenever I could, I'd grab myself a snack from the hedgerow. I'm sure people have been doing the same for millennia along this route. What a day it is. No joke, it was supposed to be raining. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, I've just come up Overton Hill. That's the official start of the Ridgeway. And as you can see, it's really pleasant. I mean, there aren't many hills, no major ones like the Lake District or anything like that. It's just nice, relatively flat, looking over the southern countryside. We even got a bench here. How good is that? Should we have a, yeah, we're gonna have a seat. Stop and rest a while, enjoy the view, and be glad that we can. George C. Darmody. Don't worry, George, I will. Trail markers and signs were dotted all over the place, it was insanely easy to follow. I could zone out and not worry about looking at my maps. They taste so good. Just making my way out of this little village it was. The first one in about, I don't know, 16 miles. So yeah, first day nearly over. Gonna start looking for a spot. Weather is actually all right now. Uh, still quite warm. But the problem is, farmers fields <laughs> everywhere it's not wild at all so it does look like see like a spot like that tucked in somewhere just before it goes dark
Have a look how green this maze or corn is. That is... It's a luminous. <laughs> Hopefully it's not like toxic or nuclear waste. Bloody corn. Anyway. Might be able to get through here. I found a spot just off the path and I got some well needed rest. Take a look at this. The fog rolled in this morning. It's about half eight. Had a great sleep, fully rested. And I'm gonna try, try to get about 10, 11 hours of walking in today. The ground is flat, straight through farmland. Have a look at it. Just green, these wheat fields. So I'm guessing this is an abandoned World War II bunker. All over the, the south of England, they placed bunkers like this just in case we got invaded. So let's have a look. Full of graffiti. Hopefully there's no one in here. Hello. Luckily, there wasn't anybody in there. I came across a petrol station and got myself some supplies. Just got myself a coffee. I feel good now. Uh, refill my waters. I've actually just ditched my water bottles. I've been using them for probably a year and a half, maybe. And I've only just bin them. You start to get a little crack in both of them. So I don't know if you can see. Fresh water bottles. Look at that field, it is huge. And it's just field after field. It must take ages to harvest crops. Fair play to the farmers, that is a tough job. Still can't get over how people made structures like this thousands of years ago. Even in today's modern times, I wouldn't have a clue. Water taps were in short supply along the route. This was the first one I came across, so I made sure to fill my bottles up to the brim. had a quick snack and then the sun decided to poke through the clouds. Tell you what, it is hot. The sun has just been on my neck cooking for about two hours now. It's really straight this path I'm taking. Oh, look at look how bright that is. Blue sky. I'm gonna have a good tan by the end of this. Uh, it's about 5 p.m. Had a few stops. There's benches just situated every few miles so you can take a seat, get a drink, a little snack. But I'm going to keep going until about half seven, eight maybe and set up for the night. But yeah, I'm enjoying it so far.
update, we'll see where we are. So we are here at the moment. We started at Overton Hill, made our way past Swindon. This indicates Oxfordshire, the county. And I'm trying to think where we are, so where does that equate to? It probably just below Wantage. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we're there. So we're going all the way over there. You've got the River Thames, famous river that leads to London. So we'll cross that. I'd love to go for a dip. That'd be great. Nice countryside. So I just noticed it before and it's just got a rip right there. There's this little bit there. So they've been beaten up a little bit. Uh, starting a little one there, a bit there. But I think they've got one more adventure left in them, one big one. It was a good time to look for a camp. This part of the trail was surprisingly remote and I got really lucky with this spot. I fueled myself and got a good night's rest. Morning. Oh. One thing I love about this scent is as soon as the sun comes up, you're awake. So, yeah, it's about half six, I think, in the morning. I'm rested and I'm looking forward to what today brings. I think this means we're halfway, so just done 65k, 41 miles, and to go we've got 71k, 44 miles. Not too bad. We crossed over the River Thames into some picturesque villages. go the first close-up of the River Thames this river right here leads to London look at all the fish spawning swimming around I don't know if you can see probably not <laughs> oh it's such a good day The day kept getting better. I couldn't believe the beauty. The thing is, it's really early in the day. It's like 1 or 2 p.m. If it was closer to 7 or 8 p.m., I probably would have tried to set up camp and go for a swim. But I need to keep going, which kind of sucks. But what a beautiful spot. Yeah, some really old like houses from three or four hundred years ago through that village, which is quite mad. <laughs> that is nice. On we go. This place hadn't seen rain for a long while.
it was good to see local farmers still being used. It was a long hot day and I was pretty tired, but nature finds a way to put you in a good mood. The shade of the forest was perfect to get out the sun. I can't remember falling asleep that night. You know it was good. The next morning followed, and back onto the trail I went. I did, however, get myself a quick coffee from a nearby town. Just got out of town, got myself a coffee, and refilled on water, got a few snacks. And I got talking to this old man, he must have been about 80, he was sitting on a bench with like a backpack, it looked like he walked and he was just, he asked me, where are you off then mate? And I told him I'm doing a Ridgeway. And he's like, oh, I've done that. He's done loads, apparently. He's a proper walker, didn't even realize. So he was just telling me about it, what I've got coming up. And he said, you just go from town to town, village to village now, and it's not as wild, but you don't really need to carry much, which I've still got quite a bit of food and I've got two liters of water. So I'm just carrying extra weight for nothing now, so. Trust your elders, they're more experienced. <laughs> Quick update, see where we are. So, Watlington, just went there for coffee. And heading east, about 27 miles to Living Cold Beacon. Again, I couldn't get over the amount of fruit on the hedgerows. Oh. Yes. That's a nice view. So the Ridgeway Trail is just there. But I need to rest. Oh. Sun's just come back out and it's hot. We're back on the ridge now. There's a town down there. And now we're back on the road. The trail actually takes you through the UK Prime Minister's country retreat. Apparently, Winston Churchill wrote some of his World War II speeches from here. Treated myself some fish and chips next to a road, like usual. In a smelly bin. Can't wait. Just had my fish and chips, they were pretty good. I'm gonna keep walking for about an hour and hopefully find somewhere to camp. The final night, I'm gonna get up really early and then we've only got just probably about three or four miles until the finish tomorrow morning. Looking forward to it. Today's been tough. I think I've done about 24, 25 miles. <clears throat> but it's getting cooler now, which is good. Only a few miles to go. Pretty early in the morning. No one's up. And it's a Sunday, so yeah, it should be pretty quiet. I think it's about five miles, maybe. Ah, I feel good. Pretty sure that's Ivinghoe Beacon right there. 
I think. It just looks like we're going around to it. There was a short but steep ascent to get onto the ridge. From here, it was straight sailing to the finish point. Here you could see the ridge sticking out amongst a flat farmland of the south. It was the perfect way to see what I've been working on for the past few days. Now I realise why it's been in use for all these thousands of years.